Um, another sm story about prayer. I think a number of the things I use tonight as links are going to be things to do with prayer. Um, I had chronic illness for about nine years, which resulted in fairly chronic um, muscular pain, which was frustrating uh, and extreme dizziness uh, for about five or six hours a day. So it meant my work capacity was quite limited um, regularly. And I learned a lot about people's thoughts about faith, because uh, I was living in Christian community at the time. I learned a lot about people's thoughts about faith in their response to somebody living among the community who was chronically ill. And uh, people said all kinds of things. You know, I was told that it was my fault that I was ill because I didn't have the right kind of faith or typical things like that. Um, after I'd been sick a number of years, I just gave up giving people quick answers you know, or giving people what they wanted to hear. So somebody would say, how do you feel today, Padraig? And i go, dizzy. You know, I'm getting on with it, like, but dizzy. Uh, and one time somebody came to me and said, how do you feel today? And I'd been sick for five years at that stage. And I said, dizzy, because you know, I was always dizzy. And she said, can I pray for you? And I was like, well, if it makes you feel better. So she put her hand on my shoulder and she said a prayer for me. And then after about 30 seconds, she goes, are you better now? <laughs> and I said, no. Are you? <laughs> yes. And then I felt justified in my anger. And I walked to Mass, and I did the Stations of the Cross, like I did today, because it's Good Friday. And I was walking around the Stations of the Cross. And I got to the bit where tradition says that Veronica wiped the face of Jesus. And I thought, damn. Uh, because while I do believe the woman was an idiot to ask me, was I better now? No, I wasn't. Nonetheless, she was possibly doing the only thing she knew how, even though it was stupid, and I wish she hadn't done it. Because I couldn't imagine Jesus of Nazareth stopping with the cross, you know, blood and sweat pouring off his face, going, thanks very much, Veronica, that's great. Go home now and feel good about yourself. <laughs> do you know? Uh, so not only was the woman who was a nurse who prayed for me, not only was she an idiot, I was an asshole. <laughs> so, and I'm not sure why I told her that story, but it's a good one. So, no Irishman needs a reason to tell a good story. Um, but w one of the things that those years did teach me was um, that uh, life isn't easy and things aren't easy. And were I to ask you, which I'm not going to, to tell each other at your table now some of the most difficult things about your life. Um, I think we would hear some very interesting and very sad and very courageous and very brave things uh, in the room here among us. Uh, and I do think we need to find ways to celebrate those things, not because we're delighted they happened, but plainly because they did and we're still here. Uh, so I put some of the laments of Jeremiah to music and I'd like to offer them to you in uh, honor and praise of you for uh, the courage that it takes to live. I've given up sometimes when I've been tired. I've given up sometimes when I've been tired. I've given up 
Sometimes when I've been tired, does it move you? Does it move you? Does it move you? And I fucked it up so many times. And I fucked it up so many times. I fucked it up so many times Alleluia Alleluia I found my home in Babylon. I found my home in Babylon. Uh, I've found my home in Babylon. But now I'm too long. 